Mass selection experiments involve artificially selecting for a specific trait in a population. In my free time that I definitely have, I've decided to try my hand in milking snakes, and why not go all out by starting with black mambas? But I want to be the best of the best. I want my snakes to give me the most venom they can. This led me to perform a mass selection experiment on my snakes to increase the venom they release per bite. The first step of this process was examining my current population to determine the venom production of each snake. I then used that data to make this histogram which displays the amount of venom in milligrams per bite and their frequencies in ranges of 10 milligrams. The mean and standard deviation values for this original set of data are 110 and 15 respectively. To carry out my selection experiment, I decided to select the top 10% of my current population to be the parents for the next generation. The truncation point, which represents the cutoff point for my selected population, shown by the left edge of this triangle, and the XT label at around 129 milligrams. The mean of this selected population is here at about 136 milligrams, labeled as XS. The difference between this mean and that of the original populations is known as the selection differential, represented by this yellow bar labeled with an S. Now that we have all of the data from the initial population analyzed, we'll move on to the offspring population produced by the top 10% of that initial group. After allowing the selected population to reproduce, we can analyze the venom production of their offspring. We can now combine this data with that of our initial population in this slightly larger histogram. The mean of this offspring population is represented here by the label X1 and is around 128 milligrams. Marking that now allows me to identify the response to selection, represented here by the red bar labeled by an R. This response was an increase in the average venom per bite by about 18 milligrams. Although there was a large response in this first experiment, if I could repeat it indefinitely, the response would eventually dwindle and become insignificant. These diminishing returns are likely the result of another trait that is being unknowingly selected for. For example, at some point in the experiments, the trait that determines how much venom a snake releases when they bite could become negatively associated with the trait determining the size of their venom glands. This relationship could result in higher amounts of venom released per bite, but less venom overall.